Hello YouTubers, Z Elder here. Someone had requested that I do a video on where I'm going through the components on my bikes and talking about the different components that I have. And um, I put one of the bikes on a stand. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the camera so I can take you guys to the bike and kind of do like a tour as I walk through um, the specifics. Uh, the components alone would not be that interesting because I have the same componentry on all these bikes. Let me back up a little bit. So I've got one of them on the stand. The blue bike is what I'm using for the Rafa challenge right now. So I just put it on the stand today to clean the drivetrain. I'm leaving it unwashed because it's supposed to rain most of the week. So I clean the drivetrain, lube it, it's ready for the ride tomorrow. Um, well, what I wanted to talk about is the, I think what would be more interesting is to talk about the sizing on the bike. This blue bike, is a compact frame. It has a sloping uh, top tube. This is a, is a 51.5. So basically with compact frame, you can use a smaller frame. I usually ride anywhere from a 55 to a 57 center to center, from the center of the bottom bracket to the center of where the seat tube meets the top, uh, the top tube. So this bike has Campy Super Record. I ride 175 millimeter cranks um, it has all my bikes have 11 speed because I like to swap wheels so when I, I got these bikes they're about a couple of years old over the last two years I've gradually got these bikes this is a custom frame built by Lighthouse Cycles in Santa Ynez California the builder is Tim Neenan guy that used to long time ago race with Greg LeMond and then when LeMond was an up and coming racer uh, he's a chef also, just well versatile guy. He was born in Austin, Texas, and now he lives in California. And he built this, uh, this is steel, and it has Richie Fork. And I run a 23, I have to run a 23 millimeter tire in the front because the width Richie Fork was laid out. With my Campy brakes, if I've tried to put a 25 in there, the 25 hits right here because this brake campy super record does not go up like a cathedral form it's just flat and so N NV fork with the angle of their hole for the brake caliper it forces me to use a 23 my other bikes I don't have that problem which is not a big deal I always ran 23 in the front I run a 23 in the front and I run a 25 in the rear on all my bikes uh, the other two can take 25, 25. This one takes only a 23 in the front because of the NV. The, the, the bottle cages are made by uh, a guy. It's, it's a king cage, a Thai king cage. I like the shape of it. It holds the bottles very securely. And it does not, it does not dirty them or mark the bottles. That's why I really like them. Um, of course, my saddle is a Cell SMP Dynamic saddle. And I used a slack angle on this bike. This is a 70 degree seat tube. And the reason I did a 70 degree seat tube, which is very slack, is that I wanted to use a straight seat post, as you see there. If I use anything other than a 70 or a 71, I can't use a straight seat post. I won't be able to set my saddle far back enough. And I don't like my rails to be all used up. I don't like sitting here on the rails in this weak area here. It's not a good idea. As you can see, I'm pretty much in the middle. So we did all the angles and everything to, and dialed it in. That's the whole point of doing a custom bike to make sure that my saddle would be in the, rig, the, 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 the center of the rails when I set it because my saddle setback is about four inches behind the bottom bracket about 10.3 centimeters so four inches and in, i mean 10.3 yeah centimeters so three millimeters beyond 10 centimeters that's about four inches and then three millimeters on top of that or four four and one eighth of an inch as far as you can get there but i do everything in centimeters so i sit pretty far back and what he did was he gave me a head tube of 74 degrees uh, my orange bike up there has a 73. I'll get to that. The reason Tim gave me a 74 degree, 
This bike, the blue bike, is a racing bike. It has sharp handling. With a 74 head tube, when I turn that thing, it turns. So it's a very aggressive feeling kind of steel bike. And with this light Columbus tubing that he used, they claim, they call it the new steel or whatever, whatever that means. I mean, I don't know much about the, the technical lingo. Uh, let me go over here. I think it's called SP, the Columbus Spirit right there. Columbus Spirit. So these tubes are very, very light. The fully built up bike with my training wheels on there comes right in around 18 pounds or about. Which is hot. It's you know heavier than most bikes, but I tell you what, I can't feel it. What I do feel is the ride. It's very supple, very smooth. It just soaks up everything. And uh, you know, I used to ride uh, Pinarello and all those other steel frames. So I missed them when I was on my Calfi. I had a Calfi carbon frame, and from there I went back to steel. I just love the material. So that's personal preference there. So anyway, with this fork on here. It, it lightens the front a little bit, but he recommended that because he designed and engineered the bike to work with the Ritchie. That's a Ritchie fork right there on this bike. <clears throat> so I, um, I'm gonna come over here. This bike here, the Colnago, uh, just a classic bike. I've always wanted something like that and I was fortunate enough to get this bike. And you can see if you look at that seat post, that's a carbon seat post, but look at the setback on that thing. That's almost probably, I think it was three or 30 millimeters or something. It's a significant setback because this seat tube here on the Colnago is 72.75. Remember I said the other bike was 70. This bike is 70, my custom bike. And you can see I can use a straight seat post. This, I could not use a straight seat post. I've always had to ride setback seat posts on all these European bikes. Because 72.75, without that seat post, I wouldn't be able to move my, my saddle far back enough. And you can see that I use up a little more than the other ones. Okay, I procured this online, the, the seat post online. And that was the furthest back that was reasonable uh, that I could get. And you know, it's okay, it's in a good position, but it set me where I needed to be. Uh, to, to get to the same point in space on all these bikes, because they're so different. That called Nago is a standard conventional bike. It's a straight top tube, it's not sloping. 58 centimeter top tube long. The height of the bike center to center is 57.5. They call it a 60 when you measure it to the top, but I, I don't know why they measure them like that. I measure where the tubes meet, from the bottom bracket to where the, the seat post meets the, the seat tube meets the top tube, it's 57.5, close enough. This bike is 55, because the builder felt like, man, you don't need to go that high, he put a slight slope on this, you can barely tell, because he liked the way it made the bigger bikes look. But this bike here has the same seat angle as the blue bike, 70. And then the head angle on this bike is a 73, which makes it more relaxed. I, I can tell the difference. This bike is more stable at speed, this orange bike. The blue bike is like a bulldog. And my buddy and I laugh about it. The blue bike goes around like it's picking a fight. This bike is more like a limo or like a, a, a boulevard cruiser. It can get up to speed. And once it gets up there, it rolls really well. This guy, he wants to bite your head off. This is a racing bike. It is aggressive, you know. And I like all of them. They all have different characteristics, especially the titanium. And the metal rides differently. So uh, they just, they feel different. This steel, this bike here is called Nago. It's like the heaviest one. I think it, it comes in like at 19 pounds, which they claim the master light was whatever. I didn't do anything special other than just put Campy on there. Triple T, it had a, the, the, the fork is steel, so of course that adds more weight. But I wanted, I like the classic look and that's perfect, I wouldn't change that fork for anything. You know, so that's one of the, the days, the, the, the bygone days with new materials. So it comes in right at 19 pounds. I can't really tell the difference because those wheels on there are the Zondas and they roll really well. 
So I don't focus so much on the weight as opposed to the way the bike feels because weight is not everything. You know, this bike here, I put a 3652 chain ring on this, uh, on there, because I needed a bike that would have a smaller ratio for the real steep eight, nine percent climbs we got out west. And so I put it on this bike. The rest of them have a 3953. That's a 3953. This is a 3652. In the back is 11. I usually run a 1227 this is a shimano wheel so it has a 1228 the shimano cassette works with a campy chain and can't be driving like no problem 11 it just works so shimano has a 1228 that's on there and the rest of these the campies i've got 1227 this blue bike i have a 1225 which gives me an 18 tooth cog in the middle which is kind of nice to have you know and this is a 39 if I'm doing something real steep, I take that bad boy. It's the lightest bike. It weighs in at 16 pounds with those wheels on there. So if I got some lighter wheels, it probably come in lighter, but I don't need anything lighter than that. So 16 pounds with my water bottle, everything's probably 17 pounds or whatever. But it definitely feels livelier than my other two, but my steel frames feel more comfortable. So I just wanted to go over that. Um, and if there's anything I miss, I run the same saddles on every bike. When you find a saddle that works for you, you need to stick with it. There is no point in going through the pain all over again. So that's why you see on there. I used a longer stem on that bike because the top two was shorter. And that's a centimeter longer than this one, the blue one. And this is a centimeter longer than the red one. That one has, I think, a 12, 13, and a 14, something like that. So yeah, so if I had to do the orange bike over again, I might have him make the top tube longer so I can use a shorter stem, but it really doesn't matter. If you look at that bike, you can see that's a, if you look at this pic, this shot right here, and take a straight line from the bar straight to the skewer, you should be able to go straight down. That's how you know you've got things lined up. That's a good little gauge there, just in that shot. There's a straight line from the, the center of the bars where it meets the stem, straight down to the skewer. So I just wanted to cover that because somebody had requested that, you know, it might be interesting for people to know that. I just want to go through, you know, your, the frames can be different, but your dimensions are the same. And so you're the same rider. So you got to get the, 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 the frame and the components to be in the same spot. So on that bike, I used a longer stem. It's the same angles. All the stems have minus 17 degree angles. That keeps me level with the ground. So that's the key, keep everything consistent. So all I did was I used a longer stem to push the bars to the space it needed to be. And on this one, I used a slightly shorter stem. And on that one, I used an even shorter stem. So they're all in the same point in space because this top tube was the longest. This was the next longest. That was the shortest. So it got the longer stem. So yeah, you have to dial your position to meet this point in space that your hands and feet and everything need to be in. So yeah, all, my, all three bikes have the same exact fit measurements after I did everything. The, so in other words, even though they have different dimensions on the frame, the points in space are exactly the same to the millimeter because we did everything, you know, when he was building those frames, we designed everything and I knew it. So that's the point. You should be able to fit yourself to any frame within reason. I mean, if this Colnago had had a 74 degree seat tube, I'd never be able to ride that thing. But, you know, that's sacrilege. I don't think the Italians would do a 74 on that bike. So anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And I hope you guys enjoyed this.